guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to upgrade your Turbo Confirm modals to a custom one. Instead of using this native browser modal um, that's actually blocking, we now in the newest version of Turbo that hasn't quite been released yet, are able to await for a confirm modal from Tailwind or Bootstrap or Foundation or anything else we could possibly want to implement. Now, one of the tricky bits is that this native modal is actually um, blocking, so it waits for the user to actually choose one of these two buttons and then it will continue executing the JavaScript. And in order to upgrade your Rails UJS or Turbo previously to a custom confirm dialog, you had to do some hacky stuff. For example, data confirm modals JavaScript overrides the window confirm several different ways. For example, this one here just turns it to a function that returns true. Um, and it basically has to do all this stuff um, to get around some limitations that there was no await for the confirm. So that was a suggestion by Jeffrey W84, I believe. Um, on Turbo and I made a PR to fix that. And basically now we need to just return a promise that resolves to true or false and Turbo will actually await for that response and wait until the resolve method is called. So this is really handy and it does a great job of improving um, our customization of Turbo. So let's take a look at how we do this. We have a button to with the data turbo confirm, which will use the turbo confirm method. Um, and if we click destroy this post, it launches that confirm method. So we just need an example like this to get started. Now in our application JS, I am importing at hotwired turbo because um, we are using Turbo from my local repository, which has the await in it. This hasn't been released yet. By the time you watch this, hopefully it will be out, but it might take a little bit longer. Um, so if you need to, you can actually clone the Turbo repository, use it from main, and you can um, compile your JavaScript with that. So Turbo simply has a set confirm method that you can assign a function to and we just need to implement something to display a modal and then resolve with a promise. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our application html.erb and rather than using like a bootstrap modal or a tailwind modal or foundation modal, we're gonna use a dialog HTML element. So we're gonna say dialog, we're gonna give it an ID of turbo confirm and we're gonna just drop this at the bottom of the page. And this is the built-in browser dialog element that you can use to display um, a dialog. What's really cool about this is it works in all browsers except for Internet Explorer, which I think is fine. We don't need to worry about that too much anymore, but you can't use this method if you do need Internet Explorer uh, support. Maybe there's a polyfill, but uh, I'm not sure on that. So um, one really awesome thing is if you put a form inside of a dialog element, you can say method, instead of being like a post request or get request or anything like that, you can say method is dialog. So it knows that it um, when the form is submitted, it will actually close the dialog um, that it is inside. So this is super awesome. So we can say, are you sure as the default text in here, we can give it a uh, div with a couple buttons. We're gonna say button value equals cancel and then we can say the button text is cancel and we'll do the same thing for like a confirm. Um, so there we go and inside of our turbo confirm method we can basically look for this dialog. We'll say dialog equals document dot get element by ID We'll get that turbo confirm um, element. And then here we can say um, conf uh, dialog show modal, and that's going to open it up. Now, if we just do this, it is going to show the modal, but still submit, um, and it's not really gonna do what we need exactly. So we need to return that new promise, like we talked about previously. And this is going to be a very simple function. We're gonna take the dialog, we're gonna add an event listener to it, and we're going to close, uh, listen to the close event. We're gonna call a function when it closes. This function is going to be a very simple. We're gonna resolve, and we want to basically compare the 
uh, return value of the button click and that is going to automatically be assigned to dialog return value and we can just check to see if it equals the confirm value and um, we also don't want to add a bunch of event listeners so we're going to add an option here once is true so this uh, event listener be, will be called once and then it will automatically remove itself and clean itself up so we don't have a bunch of event listeners submitting to old um, promises so that is really all there is to it what's really cool about this is we can refresh um, we can click this it's going to use the built-in modal styling it's pretty simple but you can use tailwind or CSS um, to style this and do what you need you can't click on the backdrop to close it you might be able to do that programmatically with some extra JavaScript but I'm not sure in general a dialog you want the user to click one of the buttons so we have our cancel button which doesn't do anything just cancels and closes that modal but if we click confirm this should resolve our promise to true which would allow the destroy request to go forward if we do that it uh, succeeds and redirects us back to the index so that is awesome this does exactly what we want um, and allows us to customize this however we need. So our HTML here for the dialog is one example, but you can copy a bootstrap modal and use the JavaScript inside of here to show that bootstrap modal. Um, you can also have this set confirm method generate the HTML and insert it at the bottom of the body and then open it if you want. So you can have a um, dynamically generated uh, modal if you would like as well um, and two other things that I want to point out here is you get the message for the confirm and the element here so if we say console.log message and element we will see those listed out and if we take our dialog and we do a query selector for that p tag inside we can set the text content equal to the message and then we can go into like our post show and we can say, are you sure you want to delete this post? And if we refresh now, we'll see this message is the one actually rendered in the dialog. So that works great. Um, you can do extra stuff if you want to add like a data attribute here for an SVG. You will see that this element is logged out. Um, since it's passed into the function as an argument, you could grab other things like the icon and maybe display a, a custom icon here, like a warning message or a danger or something like that um, for your icons if you want to make this even more pretty. So this is super awesome. Um, it's also very, very simple to implement, as you can tell. Uh, the work involved to do this previously was quite a mess and now we just have to do a very very simple event listener and return uh, something to the resolve function and we're good to go. So that is it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this gets released very soon in Turbo as a new version um, but for now you can use it from the main branch if you need it, um, or you can wait until it's officially out. So that is it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The dialog element in the browser is far, far underused, so take a look at that. I'm sure there are some nuances to it, but um, it is a great option for this if you want something very simple. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.